Welcome to Quilt Fusion. We hope you enjoyed designing your art quilt. Now we want to help you make it. Quilt Fusion patterns are based on a fusible applique method. Fusible applique is a simple and fun process that produces beautiful results. The tools and materials are simple. No fancy specialized sewing machine is required. That being said, these are art quilts and are meant to be wall hangings and are not meant to be washed. Before we get started, let's check out what's included in the pattern generated by Quilt Fusion. The first page is a full color reference image followed by a comprehensive fabric list. It has the manufacturer number and the minimum yardage requirements for each fabric used in the quilt. It also has full color swatches in case you need to substitute fabrics. Next is a list of tools you will need and step-by-step -step instructions specifically for your art quilt. The cutting guide includes full-size reverse shapes for each applique piece. Each one is labeled and grouped together by fabric. Depending on the complexity, you may have multiple pages of cutting guides. The placement guide is a full-size line drawing of your quilt. These labels match the labels in the cutting guide. Depending on the size of your quilt, you may have to tape multiple pages together to create the full-size guide. Both the cutting guide and the placement guide are 100% to scale, meaning you don't need to blow them up or shrink them down. Fusible web is at the heart of this process. It comes on a roll or in sheets. One side is coated with heat sensitive glue, the other has tracing paper. The glue melts and fuses to fabric when you iron it. The applique pressing sheet is a high temperature fabric that won't melt or burn when you iron it. Fusible glue will not stick to it and it is semi-transparent so you can use it along with your placement guide. Let's get started. Cut your background fabric and border strips first. You will use them later, but it's best to make sure you have full-size cuts before you cut into fabrics for your applique pieces. The next step is to trace each applique piece on fusible web. Lay the fusible glue side down over your cutting guide. Trace each shape and label it according to the cutting guide. One alternative to tracing is to use printable fusible web. These are sheets that you can print on any inkjet printer. Quilt Fusion cutting guides are compatible with these sheets. Cut out the pieces grouped by fabric, leaving around a quarter inch margin. Now we are going to fuse the pieces to the fabric. Iron your fabric first. A little starch helps to get the wrinkles out. Be sure to place the fusible glue side down on the wrong side of the fabric. Luckily, batik fabrics don't have a right or wrong side, but if you're using printed fabrics, this is important. Cut each applique piece out. Cut directly on your tracing line. Small complex shapes are easier to cut out using small sharp scissors. When you are done cutting, group all your pieces together by letter. All A pieces in a pile, all B pieces in another pile, etc.
Place your placement guide down and lay the applique pressing sheet over the top. A light table can be helpful but isn't necessary. Using the placement guide, peel the tracing paper off each piece and place them in order. For example, place C1 first, lightly fuse it into place, and then C2 and C3 on until you've placed all the pieces for that group. Then move on to the next assembly. When each object is assembled, you can lay everything up and fuse it together with your iron. Finally, transfer the entire assembly to the background fabric and fuse it into place. Sewing borders is simple and straightforward. Depending on how many borders you put on your design, you will attach each one in the order listed on your quilt fusion pattern. Once your borders are sewn on, layer your backing fabric wrong side up, then your batting, and then your background fabric and fused applique pieces. Basting with pins or temporary basting spray will help keep the quilt flat while you quilt. Free motion quilting allows you to freely move the quilt around in any direction under the needle. Switch out the standard foot on your sewing machine and use the darning or free motion foot. Lower the feed dogs and quilt around each applique piece. Start in the center of your quilt and work your way towards the borders. Go slow and relax. Enjoy this part of the process and take a break when you feel your eyes starting to get cross-eyed. It may look like I slowed down the video for this, but this is the real speed in which I quilt. Some people like to use invisible monofilament to quilt around each piece, but you can use anything really, so choose a thread that you think complements your quilt. Quilting adds wonderful dimensionality to your wall hanging. Don't ignore the negative space in your quilt and try adding free motion or straight stitch quilting in those areas.
When you are done quilting, trim the excess batting and backing fabric, making them even with the outer edge of the borders. The final step, binding your quilt. There's many ways to bind an art quilt. Quilt fusion patterns come with instructions on how to add a French binding. Mitering the corners is sometimes difficult to understand without a visual aid, so here is a mitered corner. Once it's stitched down, fold it around the back and hand stitch it into place. Your quilt is now ready to hang. We hope you enjoyed designing and making your quilt fusion pattern. If you have any questions, please feel free to visit the support forums at www.quiltfusion.co. Thanks!